Welcome back. You're watching HFO TV. HFO TV is co-sponsored by J.R. Johnson LLC, specialists in multifamily restoration and repair work. Gantry Incorporated, the nation's largest independent mortgage banking firm. Uh, welcome back to HFO TV. Uh, my name is Lee Fahrenbacher, and I am joined today by Eric Cole of the Revitalized Portland Coalition, a uh, local nonprofit that uh, has recently formed to kind of help the city uh, get get back on its feet, hopefully. And uh, we're here to talk about kind of what they're they're working on. Great, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So um, before we kind of jump into some things, I was just uh, kind of hoping to chat about kind of where you are from and who you are. Um, I understand you recently moved here from Arizona. Yep. So how how does the city of Portland strike you? How do you like it? That's great. Um, my wife actually ha came to, was in, recruited to Portland to be the dean at the uh, uh, Pacific Northwest College of Art okay. in the Pearl. And so it's funny, 20 years ago, uh, before we had kids, uh, Portland was one of the places we talked about moving. Uh, and we ended up not doing that. We went back to where I was from in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, but we're thrilled to be here and yeah. uh, love, the, you know, obviously the climate, the uh, natural resources, the hiking, yeah. uh, you know, the atmosphere is great. I understand. Uh, I think I read somewhere that you've climbed Mount Rainier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Many, many, two decades ago. Yeah. Uh, nice. With a good friend. And uh, it was a fantastic experience. Yeah. I've, uh, I've done that as well, uh, though it feels like many, many uh, <laughs> lifetimes ago. But uh, yeah, pretty, pretty awe inspiring. You know, what's your, tell us about your background. Um, I, I understand you were previously a councilman in, uh, in Nashville working mm -hmm. on issues of homelessness and crime, maybe potentially somewhat similar to, to Portland now. Um, can you tell us a little bit about sure, that? Sure, yeah, I was a district council member in a uh, fairly urban district um, in, in the East Nashville area of Nashville. And uh, had the great experience of, you know, kind of representing my constituents, but also being budget chair, also being involved in kind of those big decisions that cities have to make. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, really uh, got a lot out of that. Enjoy the whole local government um, aspect because you're really close to the issues. Yeah. Okay. I was curious um, with, with that experience, um, you know, in coming to Portland last year, have you noticed any differences between you know, Nashville and Portland, um, or rather any kind of unique challenges that Portland faces in kind of how you're approaching some of the yeah. topics we're, we're talking about today. Sure. Yeah. For, for many years, Portland was kind of the example. I mean, I, you know, when we looked at land hmm. use or community planning, I mean, Portland was always this shining example. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I think there are some some pretty significant differences in kind of what constituencies are are, are heard from or, or responded to. Um, you know, in Nashville, the business community, the convention and tourism community were, you know, big drivers. And sometimes, you know, I hear from our members or folks here that they feel like uh, business voices are not as as well accepted uh, in the discourse mm. uh, in Portland. So that's a that's a pretty significant um, difference, I'd say, is kind of where you're putting the focus on kind of economic development and growth. Okay. I feel like that kind of um, leads us into some of my next questions about just, you know, RPC. Um, you were hired to uh, head up and moved here to to lead RPC, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, so how did how did Revitalize Portland Coalition begin and when did that yep. kind of conversation start? So in uh, in late 2021 at the uh, at a annual breakfast, uh, Jordan Schnitzer kind of said a lot of the things that I think people were thinking about mm. the state of affairs in Portland and kind of put it all together into a, you know, kind of a let's all get in this together. Let's find some solutions together. Mm -hmm. um, and a group of individuals in the commercial and office real estate and multifamily uh, community kind of came together and said, let's let's see what we can do about working on these issues. So by the time I came along, they already had a really nice nucleus of folks working together. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just able to kind of put some structure and, and bring some of my perspective around, you know, engagement. How do you work with elected officials? Um, how do you do the different things to communicate with your members? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you'd kind of mentioned earlier, just business community feeling unheard. 
Um, sounds like maybe communication being a, a, a very big focus for RPC. And- I would say, yeah, communication is a, a, a critical um, both challenge and opportunity at the same time. Sure. Um, you know, I think during the pandemic and afterwards, I think elected officials maybe were hearing from a pretty small group of people. And, you know, part of what we've tried to do is introduce ourselves, kind of put the issues back in front of um, elected officials from the perspective of what our property managers, our property owners, um, our, or our tenants are experiencing. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, yeah, we I mean, as a multifamily brokerage company, um, I think, you know, we have a lot of um, um, you know, thoughts and opinions on yep. um, housing and the economy, which I know is one of the, the focus areas for RPC. And, um, you know, I feel like in the past that has also been a challenge where we have ideas that we'd like to share, propose uh, that, you know, maybe aren't being um, heard or, you know, received well at the uh, when they get to the policy uh, yeah. level. So yeah. um, with that, I suppose, um, maybe you could just kind of give us a overarching, you know, um, message about RPC's mission. Sure, sure. Um, So we like to talk about ourselves as kind of the uh, advisory committee that elected officials never really ask for, (laughs) but that they need. Um, So, you know, we are really not really about kind of proposing solutions, kind of jumping in, rolling up our sleeves and, and being helpful, right? So it's, you know, yes, there's a lot to to complain about. There's lots of issues that we all face, right? But, you know, at the same time, I think, you know, almost to a person in our membership, these are leaders that, you know, get things done day in and day out, right? They know how to build companies, they know how to build buildings, they know how to run, uh, you know, phenomenal operations. So, you know, I think it's a set of voices that can really offer something to the public discourse. Mm -hmm. Um, So that makes my job easy because then I'm just kind of presenting what I'm hearing or seeing uh, among our membership. And, you know, I think the other thing we get branded is, you know, the, the big bad business community. I'm amazed at the compassion and the community involvement that, you know, all of our members have here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think um, it's it's a really, uh, it's a real strength of, um, you know, Portland in that you've got a lot of business leaders that are involved in, you know, boards of directors and civic, civic endeavors, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you could tell us, uh, you know, who are some of the members? Um, who, who's involved with RPC? Sure. So our, our kind of core groups are the kind of associations that um, uh, that the, the serve the commercial and office real estate um, market and 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 uh, professions. So NAOP, uh, BOMA, IRAM, you know, kind of this uh, a, a whole group of kind of professional associations or credentialing associations that um, you know. And in addition, multifamily Northwest mm-hmm. and and other uh, larger associations, it adds up to about a, over eight thousand people that we represent in mm-hmm. some way or another with those members. Um, and then in addition to that, we've had added and had uh, individual companies, so development companies that have joined. Uh, some of the service mm-hmm. uh, industry uh, companies have joined. I mean, it's really you know kind of anybody whose livelihood depends on um, you know a a thriving, healthy downtown or thriving, healthy inver- urban environment. Um, we don't have real high standards for, you know, if folks are interested and they they think that uh, uh, what we're doing makes sense, um, you know, we're happy to have people kind of join in and, mm-hmm. and, and join that collective effort. And do you think there has been a void in terms of, um, you know, what RPC is doing and, and the organization of, um, you know, partners and businesses that you're bringing together do you think there's been a void um, in, in our community in terms of being able to uh, coalesce uh, around some of those um, those interests and needs? Yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the things we have a, an advantage of is we're one of the few business groups that's just completely focused on livability and revitalization. Mm-hmm. We don't, you know, we don't, there's, we have more flexibility that way in that, you know, there are other responsibilities that we don't, you know, have to take on. So we can spend more time and, and more engagement um, uh, doing this. Um, I, you know, I think, I think the like civic infrastructure, you know, people coming together and yeah. and and representing their industries and 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 leading. 
um, is a really, really important thing. And it kind of always has to be um, tended to and rejuvenated. So, um, you know, I think I hope that we're an added uh, benefit to mm-hmm. the existing organizations that are here. So kind of dovetailing with some of the uh, the work that like Portland Metro Chamber um, are doing and, and others. Absolutely. Like, you know, yeah. we don't we work a, real closely with the chamber, with Clean and Safe, um, with the other business associations. I mean, you know, we're, we don't we aren't going to take on cleaning response, you know, those kind of responsibilities. Right. But, you know, there's a whole set of, of issues there that need to be raised up to our elected officials. We have a kind of a specific lane, I think, in our uh, experience with, you know, being able to work on the homelessness policy issue because of my background, but also on kind of, you know, this whole concept of how do you create, retain uh, affordable housing. I mean, right. we have, you know, experts like yourself, <laughs> right? But also uh, multifamily Northwest. Um, you know, I think there are some pieces of that discussion that are beyond just funding and money uh, about how do you generate, you know, more market rate units as well as affordable units. And I think that's a place where, you know, we're able to be uh, pretty directly involved. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's talk about that. Um, so there are four main issue, uh, issues or areas of concern that RPC is, is focusing on homelessness, crime and safety, uh, the city's public image, and the economy and housing. Mm-hmm. Um, how did uh, Revitalize Portland Coalition identify these areas um, and, you know, kind of why? That's a that's a really good question, and I don't know if I know the answer because it was okay. prior to me. They okay. had already pulled it together, <laughs> but um, you know, I think they're the issues that kind of you know stand out in terms of what Port- Portland's kind of struggling with right now. They're all connected. I mean, there's yep. no way to separate any of them from 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 each other. But you know, you, you have to if you're going to eat the elephant, you got to have digestible bites. And so, you know, because we're pretty pragmatic and trying to drive towards solutions. This was a good way to kind of uh, organize the work. Mm -hmm. Um, And we found that, you know, among our membership, folks generally have either an expertise in one of the areas or a greater interest in in one or the other. Yeah. Okay. Um, Yeah, that that's great, because my my next question was just kind of how do you see those areas of focus, um, you know, sharing, uh, you know, a common theme or. you know, um, uh, a goal underneath the the overall mission. Yeah, um, which makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, at the end of the day, we want to see our community more livable. We want to see healthy growth. Um, you know, you've got to have economic underpinnings to have the kind of uh, just, equitable society that we all want. And so, you know, you have to be able to kind of focus and our elected officials have to focus on, um, you know, the economics of, of uh, what we're experiencing at the same time that they look at these kind of more immediate uh, crisis issues that are there. Yeah, I mean, and, and despite having, you know, the four areas of concern or, or issues, yep. um, you know, I think there's a lot there, right? I mean, that that's a lot to tackle um, and um, a lot of, you know, improvement or room for improvement in the city of Portland. Um, I mean, how do you tackle all that yeah. as an organization? How do you, yeah. you know, what, what are the kind of the short-term steps that you guys are hoping to yeah. take to kind of inch forward? It's, uh, it's interesting because I think you got to have that, you know, higher 10,000 foot view, right? That does know those issues are connected, but then like, okay, if you're going to do the work, you've got to be able to more specifically focus. Um, You know, we, we've kind of targeted and really zeroed in for this quarter um, and probably for the remainder of this year, you know, specifically on the homelessness issue. Mm -hmm. Well, we know, I think it's, you know, everybody realizes that the bulk of the funding, uh, the public funding for homelessness services and, and outreach and and uh, and housing lives at Multnomah County, mm-hmm. um, or it lives you know at Metro with the supportive housing services tax that you know we all pay. Um, well, you know, there's been a series of news stories, but audits as well that just show we've got some real challenges at the county uh, in terms of accountability, you know, transparency. Um, we at the end of the day want to see, you know, unsheltered homelessness, 
ended, uh, to see the conditions on the street better, but also that folks that are experiencing homelessness have some better options. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you look at all that funding and you look at these audit findings and challenges, we've kind of zeroed in on, okay, county, you know, you've got this huge amount of funding and focus. What's your plan? And how do we make sure that those dollars are being spent the best way possible? So that's, it's an example of a focus area where we've kind of zeroed in on that piece. You know, there's obviously lots going on with the city of Portland. The mayor's got a lot of initiatives happening around homelessness, but we, you know, our collective membership felt like, you know, really focusing on the county and those funds made the most sense right now. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, as I was kind of reading through uh, some of the materials available on the organization online, um, you know, under the homelessness plan, one of the first points is to gather information from other jurisdictions mm-hmm. that are having some success. And I was just curious, um, you know, what kind of uh, jurisdictions are you looking to, um, you know, who mm-hmm. and and what lessons um, should we be taking away from, from what others sure. have already done? Sure. Probably the biggest example is this concept of, a, you know, having data driven results mm-hmm. and really operating off of what, you know, the in, what is known as the by name list. And basically, it's kind of a best practice. It's not super complicated, but the idea is let's know who the population is that we are trying to serve or help and then methodically, you know, work to match services with those individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we overcomplicate lots of things. uh, And, you know, this is one of those where it's kind of a a back to the basics approach. And communities have seen, you know, different populations uh, within the homelessness community ended. I mean, they've, you know, there's some, there are communities that have ended veterans homelessness or, um, you know, steeply reduced chronic homelessness. It's a really kind of proven method. It's called Built for Zero. Um, Portland and, and Multnomah County have adopted it, but we're still not putting it to a great deal of use from what we can tell. Okay. And so, you know, that's one of those examples where it's not, you know, super sexy or anything, but it, you know, it, it, it does allow a community to prioritize resources and really focus on specific populations and use that data, you know, to make sure you're not, um, you know, having, I mean, I remember in Nashville, we would talk about individuals who had six or seven different caseworkers mm-hmm. at six or seven different agencies, mm-hmm. right? That didn't talk to each other. Probably. Exactly. No. Exactly. So, you know, the ideal situation is you've got a by name list and then you're almost like case conferencing on that individual and their specific needs and kind of matching those things up. You know, it again, it sounds, it sounds easy. It's hard when there's so many different organizations, right? Yeah. But it's still something that if we're putting all this much, you know, taxpayer dollars into, I think we could expect, we can expect that that coordination starts to happen. Sure. Yeah. No, I mean, um, it sounds complicated, I, I think. I mean, it, <laughs> it's easy to kind of right. give, you're right. giving me the, 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 the you know, one to take, but, yeah. Um, yeah. but there's a lot there. Um, there is. And I think, um, you know, I'm curious, like, what's the strategy or what's RPC strategy to implement those lessons? Um, is it is it just, you know, hitting legislators or elected leaders with communication and advocating for, um, you know, those types of policies going forward? What, what is the strategy? So, uh, you know, I think we, if you go on our website, you can see we've kind of uh, uh, demar- you know, we've kind of illustrated a plan or kind of the types of things we'd like to see prioritized that we think w- would help the community um, resolve the issue more quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what we tend to do is really track what's happening in the de- in the debate mm-hmm. or what's, you know, what are the, well, are on the agendas of the different elected bodies and then find our places to, to you know, really uh, engage. So, you know, none of us expected, I think, that the um, Helping Hands Center out at Bybee Lakes mm-hmm. would have the kind of financial issues that they've had over the last little while, but we have been supportive of them from the get-go. So sure. when that, you know, when their challenges kind of rose up because of some changes in state funding, um, we jumped right into that um, debate but and so you know again try to tell the story try to tell the story of the individuals that have been served out at Bybee and then also what a what a 
devastating blow it would be if we lost those 130 beds, right? That we know from talking to people that, you know, engage with the homeless community in downtown Portland, sometimes Bybee's the only place they can go. Mm -hmm. Um, The other places can have three, two or three week waiting periods. And at least with that, you know, organization, there's a, their beds as well as a, a pathway towards, um, solutions and, and treatment. So that's just an example. Like sure. none of us, I don't think we expected to be in that uh, debate or conversation. And, you know, I don't think the county expected to have as much, as many extra dollars as they have right now. Right. right? right. Um, so, you know, it's kind of picking and choosing our uh, right shots in, you know, in the right space and then, you know, leveraging the power of our coalition in that area. Yeah, so um, that's great. I mean, it sounds like really, you know, kind of telling those stories and, you know, um, you know, a higher level of, of communication. Do you feel like elected uh, leaders are listening and hearing the message? You know, up until the last three or four months, I would, you know, that was a, it was a frustration because I don't think we felt like we heard much. You know, with this this one vote, we heard from county commissioners Mm -hmm. that part of the reason they voted the way they did or were willing to look at, you know, the Bybee Lakes model Mm -hmm. um, was because they heard so much from regular everyday folks. And so I I think there's, you know, definitely um, power in. Uh, really pushing the, the the narrative and then, you know, also kind of highlighting the real world impact of a place like that. Cool. Switching gears a little bit, um, economy and housing, um, mm-hmm. one of the other focus areas. Um, obviously, there there's a lot there. Um, we've got a huge housing shortage, huge need for more housing production, um, some policies that are, um, you know, arguably kind of stimming um, the production of new housing. Um, but that aside, like, what do you see as the long-term goal yeah. for the housing, uh, you know, focus area for yeah. RPC? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you have to look at all of the factors that you know drive business decisions in the in the region, mm-hmm. and you know, it's it's kind of unar. You can't argue with the fact that our you know tax rate is so high mm-hmm. uh, in you know multiple different. Um, areas. I mean, we, the mayor asked us to come in and talk about um, this tax abatement. They passed a tax abatement program last week right. that, you know, will we'll, uh, at least for a year, if somebody, you know, establishes a new lease or extends their lease in certain areas of downtown, um, they will, uh, they won't have to pay that, that Portland. I thought that was a great step in the right direction. I did too. And I I think, you know, we were happy to jump in and and testify and be part of that. We want to take it further because the county has a, has a similar tax. We think the county should offer a a similar version um, to the city. Um, But, you know, those decisions, and and I think, you know, this is one of the things with, as this governor's task force comes together, I think one of the things we're heartened by as we keep we do hear conversation about right sizing that tax burden mm-hmm. and looking at those policies. You know, six eight months ago, that conversation was nowhere uh, on the on the agenda. We were raising it, and others were raising it, but it wasn't something I think that was getting traction. And you know, the reality is, these several of these taxes have to be re-upped by mm-hmm. the voters if they're going to continue in a few years. So. Um, you know, I think it's 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 positive. It's something we have to look at because, you know, I think the facts really show that we're losing population. Mm-hmm. We're specifically losing higher income population and families, um, and families yeah. as well. And, you know, that's those are the kind of trends that that that. Uh, start to worry me, maybe not so much the immediate, you know, issues, but uh, those kind of longer term economic trends, you know, we and again, talk about a billion dollars in lost revenue in the last two years. You're right. Um, and again, looking at that data, data driven um, yep. information to make hopefully better policies. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of what we do is educate ourselves, mm-hmm. but also educate lawmakers. I mean, that, you know, that you only have a certain amount of inputs when you're sitting in an elected seat. And, um, you know, I think it's important that you get to see all of those different perspectives. Mm -hmm. We work with multifamily Mm -hmm. uh, housing providers, um, a lot of developers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the things that I hear a lot is 
frustration with city of Portland, um, you know, outside of the permit fees um, and, you know, just the costs associated, just the time it takes to get a project through from, um, you know, the, the earliest idea of a project to, you know, uh, issuance of permits is a very long time. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I saw on your website, it's, it's one of the, um, you know, areas or, or items that you guys have kind of identified as being a focus. And I was just curious, Ken, what do you think needs to happen there? I know there's some changes happening right now in terms of uh, how city council is planning to kind of restructure um, Bureau of Development Services and permitting office and who holds power over that. Um, just kind of curious to hear your thoughts on that front. Yeah, I mean, I think I think with that one, you can get into the weeds and the minutia really fast. Sure. And, yeah. and, and you know, that's important. Um, but overall... You know what's the what's the goal of you know the city's involvement in that enterprise, right? It ought to. I mean, I think we all agree that it ought to be about you know supporting and engaging you know kind of healthy uh, industry, right? Mm-hmm. Acro- or you know healthy development and healthy growth. Um, it just doesn't feel like that, and it, right. it feels like you know there's not been a lot of housekeeping done to kind of manage right. <laughs> that process and and you know that I think a lot of people would agree with that. Yeah, and yeah. that's a you know it's a hard one to point out and and find okay how do you specifically deal with it. Um but at the end of the day that's one of the places where we've said look, you know, we, at the very minimum our professionals that are our members like yourself and others need to be at that table shaping those policies, guiding that, you mm-hmm. know, those practices. Um, so that we are making some better decisions that that you know will speed things up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not sure a lot of the slowness is anybody's intention. It it just is what happens. You know, as as systems go on and on and on. Right. And I remember sitting in you know in that seat in Nashville and wanting you know working for mayors that wanted things fast right. <laughs> and quicker. And you know, there's always so you're um, on the other side of the coin exactly. Yeah. And there's always a level of of resistance, right? But if you know, if if those workers or bureaucrats, etc., feel like they're part of something and that they're driving towards a better outcome, um, you know, I think you can. I think you can do a lot with improving that. Um, now, I've only been here for a year, so <laughs> sure, I, yeah, totally. I won't put you on the spot more than more than that. No, it's fine. Um, that's great. Um, so, kind of big idea. Um, you know, I think. My colleagues and I hear this a lot. You know, we'll we'll call and speak with investors um, about their their assets and kind of what they're doing. Um, and oftentimes, the the conversation will evolve into a conversation about voicing frustrations with the city of Portland and what's what they're seeing and what they're experiencing. Um, we hear it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I think. RPC, um, you know, uh, kind of listening in on some of the conversations that you guys have had, you've you've built a a coalition of, um, you know, uh, stakeholders uh, to, you know, kind of talk and share those experiences. Um, But my question is, is how do you how do you um, turn those frustrations into action? Yeah. You know, what's what what happens there? How do you how do you take, you know, this overall feeling of negativity that some people, you know, have understandably? Yeah. But how do you turn that frustration into action? Yeah, that's a great I mean, it's a great question. I have been v- pleasantly surprised since coming to Oregon how it does feel like everybody here is like a DIY expert. Like I, you know, everybody think, I mean, I, you know, yeah. we'll have members that are proposing full policy solutions, right? Yeah. I mean, I have run into organizations that are rewriting, you know, they think they're going to go in and, you know, change everything. So I, I, I think we've got a lot of a spirit to build on where, mm-hmm. you know, folks want to be engaged in their government. They want to be engaged in their community. So then how do you encourage that spirit? I mean, it goes back to the entrepreneurial spirit of Portland overall, mm-hmm. right? You know, the, all the the cultural uh, institutions, the small businesses, et cetera. So how do you encourage that um, kind of free spirit, you know, creativity? Um, but then also kind of, you know, p- 
pointed in a direction towards solutions. And I, you know, I think the missing piece has been elected officials that are willing to kind of listen or think outside that box. And we're seeing that change. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I think there's some voices right now. Uh, Julia Brem Edwards on the county commission asks incredibly good questions and is very thoughtful, I think, about, you know, kind of the, the concerns of the constituency. Um, so I think we're, you know, I think what's been missing somewhat is the the elected officials listening mm -hmm. or being, you know, being willing to pay attention. Um, so I think the other thing is, you know, a lot more people are concerned about our current state of affairs and future, I think, than anybody realizes. I mean, a lot of the polling mm -hmm. does show pretty deep among, you know, just regular everyday Oregonians Certainly. a real concern yeah. with, you know, some of the, the choices and the direction. And so I think it's a pretty critical moment. Um, and I think, you know, part of Part of our strategy, too, is to encourage our membership and our organizations to be more involved, you know, to try to elevate our folks onto commissions and onto mm -hmm. boards um, and onto running for office. I mean, next year is going to, you know, you've got 12 different city council members, city council seats with, you know, a whole new level of voting. Um, so it's a great time for folks to run for sure. office. Um, That's a good point. You know, yeah. so I, you know, I feel like people are looking for um a hopeful you know constructive avenue and that's part of what we just try to provide that's great so um i guess kind of lastly um you know uh how should people get involved and and who would you guys like to hear from yeah no that's great um you know, it's interesting going back to what you asked before or mentioned before. I think the story of the investor perspective mm -hmm. of Oregon, Portland, the the region is a really important one that needs to be told. I mean, I, when I hear, you know, when you hear kind of that, what that, I mean, it's one thing about what the national news says, mm -hmm. but the other thing, oh, but, totally. yeah. right, you know, yeah. but what those investors are actually hearing, seeing, and that, you know, the structural issues uh, potentially, I think that's where things get scary. And yeah. so I think more of that story um, needs to be told. Um, you know, it's funny, working in, a, in, a, in an environment like Nashville, you know, where we had no income tax in the state, mm -hmm. we had a pretty high property tax, we had out the roof uh, sales taxes, but we had to have a balanced budget every year. I mean, we had to, you know, we had extraordinary constraints on our revenue and our spending. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I learned a whole lot about how do you, you know, kind of live within your means. Yeah. And I, there were lots of things I wish we'd been able to do more of and spend more money on and that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, you get used to uh, fiscal constraint uh, as a government. And I, you know, I, it's, it's rare. I see kind of that discussion happening here at the County or the city okay. and that concerns me. Sure. Um, you know, and I think that's one of those places where our expertise and our, you know, ability to run businesses is really can be valuable and helpful. Um, so that's one thing I think, you know, we're, cons we're always interested in more people kind of coming into the fold. We do these monthly meetings mm -hmm. via Zoom, which are, are are open to folks that want to come and, and hear what's, get updates, hear what's going on. Or just um, sharing their experience. Or sharing their the own group. experiences. That's right. That's right. Because um, then ultimately you guys, you can take those stories and you can exactly. take them to city council. You can take them to uh, the, the county yep. and, um, you know, kind of help to illustrate That's why right. you're advocating for certain policies. That's right. And, you know, I think one of the changes more recently has just been the receptivity of, of uh, some of the elected officials to ask us to come and testify. So we've, you know, got this sure. opportunity now to put our, our members in as, you know, as, as spokespeople mm -hmm. uh, to tell their own stories. Um, so, you know, we're still focused on the kind of real estate community and, and our needs, but there are all these different groups that are working towards kind of a better Portland. And one of the things we've been talking about recently is, you know, can we pull some of those groups together so we at least know that, you know, that we're all working on the same page. So that's that's something coming, you know, I think uh, in the future and down the road. Great. Um, I lied. One, one last question. Sure. Um, what do you think success looks like for RPC in 2024? Oh, it's a great question. Um, you know, I would, I would love to see more of the kind of 
wins that we've seen here recently, which mm-hmm. is, you know, to see the county uh, balance out, you know, its its policies and and uh, spending so that we do have a, more of a continuum of kind of immediate services mm-hmm. and shelter. Um, we have a huge need around a sobering facility or center. And mental health is a whole other story that can go on and on. I, I joined for but, the, uh, the forum uh, yeah, just this week. Yeah. And it was very interesting. Yeah, I mean, and there's a lot there, right? There's lots yeah, of challenges. Lots there. But I think that kind of, you know, do we have an opportunity for somebody that decides, okay, I want to, you know, go into recovery or I want to start coping with my issues. Is there a pathway for them? And I don't think there is right now. So that would be a huge win. I mean, yeah. to have a, a focused, you know, effort around a sobering center as well as a pathway to, to treatment in, in, in 24. Which um, I suspect will require, you know, a huge amount of advocacy it will. Uh, pushing for it that will. outcome. It yeah. will. On crime and safety, we have a very specific proposal. Um, it's really focused, you know, we kind of don't have any accountability right now happening when uh, low level crime, property crimes are committed. Right. Um, you know, one of the ways we'd like to see the the district attorney's office start charging and actually, you know, um, addressing those, you know, graffiti, vandalism, right. smashed windows is we've offered this kind of idea of a civil compromise program. And it's basically where, you know, someone that gets um, picked up by the police for one of those offenses can can opt to not be charged. But in, in lieu of that, they would go do community service work. Uh, and, you know, again, it's something we had at one point in Portland that we'd love to see us you know, come back to. And this one's doable. We've got a lot of the elected officials and the judges uh, on board. Uh, we just got to push it through um, uh, over the next few months uh, to get that in place. The idea is not, you know, the idea is really just to to not, cre- you know, not add up charges and, and um, fines and fees on, indiv- on people, but to have some way to have some accountability around those those issues because we know that the stuff starts to add up, like the aggregate effect of graffiti and then broken windows and smell. You know, it's that, a huge amount of frustration, it, a huge source of frustration for property owners. Um, can't I mean I've met with property owners who have worked for months and months to yep. have the city come help them clear up the graffiti only to have it tagged the very next morning and you know they'll be in tears talking yep. about it and, uh, and this is yeah and this is an yeah. evolution i think of you know we did a a fair amount of work kind of pushing those city solutions around graffiti remediation and mm-hmm. you know murals and 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 responding and and then even pushing some of the 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 public uh programs that will help um small businesses you know uh, recover. And we ran into the same frustration. I mean, mm-hmm. just that, you know, it's kind of happening over and over and over, um, which, you know, I think that's what led us to this, you know, kind of going further upstream um, to try to find some more um, far reaching solutions. Great. Well, Eric, thanks again for coming Glad in to. and uh, having a conversation. Really appreciate it. Really interesting work that you guys are doing. Um, that's it. Uh, Thank you for joining us for HFO TV. We appreciate you watching. For anyone who wants additional information on Revitalized Portland Coalition, we'll include a link to the website so you can check it out and hopefully get involved. Our entire office specializes in multifamily real estate, making HFO the largest multifamily brokerage in the Pacific Northwest. Your success is our passion. Build your legacy with HFO. Call 503-241-5541 or visit our website at hfore.com for more information.